Well, how exciting. We have a new version of Marvelous Designer, and that's always fun to get new uh, toys to play with. Uh, there's not an awful lot in here. I think this is perhaps a, uh, well, I'm not entirely sure what it is, but, um, you know, there's not an awful lot of additional features. Um, so we have uh, this new topology tool, which we can use to uh, speed up topology. Uh, we also have uh, a new UI, which is terrific. Um, so we can have more than one uh, more than one interface at the same time. So previously, you could have you know the design area, you could have the UV area on the material area, whatever. Uh, but now you can have them all on the same page, and we'll go through that in a little bit. Uh, what else have we got? This website is weird. Yes, we have the retopology uh, improvement. So we've got some, uh, something called the retopology patch. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, the partial solidify. So we can now solidify bits of our model, uh, which is interesting. Uh, it doesn't completely solidify it, but it helps it keep its shape. Uh, there's some store integration. I'm not sure how interested. Uh, well, I'm certainly not very interested in that. And we have some tweaks to the um, the animation changes. Uh, so we'll get into those in a few seconds. So I'll talk to you then. Okay, so firstly then, and this isn't a new feature, this is simply what happens when I add a new uh, version to my uh, PC, is uh, we get a lot of things uh, that aren't actually downloaded. See, each of these has an N uh, or an M beside them. Uh, that essentially means that there are some things to be downloaded. So what we can do is at the top, uh, where it says the little M, we can click the download button and it says do you want to download all the files and I'll say yes and it will start to download them and add them in so that I've got everything locally and you know I don't have to keep going looking for things um, you know when somebody says well you find it in this directory um, and that directory doesn't even exist uh, that's usually because the download hasn't been done so that's my first step on uh, opening a new version um, in the next bit we'll start to look at the topology tools okay then so uh, let me just turn this uh, viewport off or turn the mesh off rather there we go so uh, the retopology tool then we've got an extra little uh, tool to use and um, I've been playing with it just to see if I can work out the best way to use it um, but it's called the patches so up on the top of the 2d window we've got topology patches and that brings up this little dialogue uh, which gives us subdivisions um, and not an awful lot else so once it's active I can actually draw in here so I'm just click to point there down the bottom across the bottom back up again to about the same level click oops come on click there we go and then back over and it creates us a grid which is terrific it, it saves us doing quite a lot of messing about in that respect um, and once you've got that on there you can actually go in and change the subdivisions so in terms of my vertical subdivisions um, I think I perhaps don't have enough so I'm going to select uh, one end there and I'm going to increase that to say 13 and then I'll do the same on the other side and that doesn't seem to have made any difference at all let's try 15 there we go it's 15 seems I can't type or it's not actually typing there we go 15 so now I've got squares which is terrific I prefer to have you know nice square uh, polygons uh, so that's great uh, however it doesn't help me with curved areas uh, because even if I can use this curve uh, I can't come out and then create a curve around it so that doesn't work so I still have to do some hand topology 
Uh, plus, I've discovered that it's best to do my patches all at the same time. So let me do the back at the same time. And that will save me losing all my settings. Oops, click and come in. And now I need to set these back to 12. Again, it's not typing 12. There we go. And then the same on the bottom. 12. There we go. So now they'll match up, which is, you know, uh, good. <laughs> so that's that. Um, I've also found that um, I can add a second patch to, to help me. So if I, for example, create a patch between here and here, and just over a little bit and up and back to the beginning again, uh, I don't have the opportunity, I don't think, to just change these points, which is slightly frustrating. So I'm going to undo that and try and do this in a more square way. Trying to line it up with those. There we go. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight polygons there to uh, connect to. So I'll change that bottom line to eight and this one to eight. And let's square these up. This will need to come down probably to around eight actually. I could have worked that out before, I couldn't I? There we go. So now it's a question of going in and filling in the, the gaps, uh, which is no different to how we did it previously. So if I go to Create Topology, actually I need to click Create on here first to make that live. Uh, I can now go in and start, oops, it's an invalid, ah, it's not patch or one, it's Create Topology. So I can now go in, oh come on, I don't want the patch tool, I want the create topology tool. There we go, so now I can start filling in my edges, or filling in my gaps at least, and you know that should save me a bit of time, because previously I would have had to create all this by hand. Um, as I said, you still have to do the fiddly bits, so I'm still going to have to come around here and do my nice edge flow and of course I can update this you know in a moment or two uh, but while I'm in the actual creating topology tool I can't really edit my placement whoops didn't mean to do that okay so now I can go into edit topology and I can start to just smooth these out a bit. There we go. So yes, I think it will speed things up. Um, it's a step forward, of course. Step forwards are to be welcomed. Um, but I think you know, if you have another uh, topology tool in another program, um, I would still probably be using that. And uh, if you, well, the great thing is, is if you don't have another program with the retopology tool in, then you've got an easier job, which is terrific. Uh, okay, so I, I don't really want to uh, do too much more here, so I'll go into like a speed mode now and just finish all this off. Right, so that's me finished the front at least. And uh, <coughs> I've not done a very good job. We've got rather too many triangles in here for my liking. Uh, but yeah, it, yeah, it's not bad. Excuse me, frog in the throat again. Uh, so okay, so that's the, the retopology improvement. And uh, next we'll come in and have a look at uh, one of the other uh, improvements. Probably the AI next, I think. Okay, so the user interface has been updated uh, quite a bit from what I can see. And uh, first of all, we've got two tabs here, uh, our garment or general, 
and store. So the general one is the one we'll all use most, which is where you create your uh, clothes, and then the store will take you to the store, uh, where you can uh, grab stuff and buy stuff if you wish. Uh, so uh, back to the general tab. Um, the thing that uh, has previously been quite frustrating is that you've had lots of different rooms. You had like the animation room, you had the UV room, you had the this room and then that room and the other room. But now it's all in one interface. Uh, so we've lost our little drop down up on this uh, top right that we used to have. Um, but actually it's been replaced with something I think that might be slightly better. So first of all, the animation uh, timeline is down the bottom here. So it's not separate. You don't have to go into another room to do it. You've got your animation tools uh, right where you can see them. Uh, secondly, previously we've only had two workspaces in uh, our main working area. And now we can have uh, one, two, three, or even four. Uh, I'm gonna go for three, I think. And that will open up a new little window down the bottom. And for this window, I can now select the function I want. And since for the vast majority of the time, I'm either working in UVs or I'm working in the garment room or, or you know, the 2D or the 3D, I think having the UV editor down there is probably quite handy. Cuts down my real estate for the pattern, but I can still zoom in quite far and, and, and use it. Um, so the other thing is, uh, over here we used to have quite a, a cluster of all sorts of things. Um, so we used to have like fabric, buttons, loopholes, um, zippers, all sorts of things. Uh, but now we've only got the property editor and we've got fabrics. But you can change that, of course. So <coughs> either by clicking the duplicate button up in the top corner of the window, or by going to display window and picking the one you want. Uh, so say I want top stitch because I use top stitch a fair bit. Uh, it will reveal the top stitch window for me. And I can drag and drop that on top of that window and it becomes a second tab. Uh, or I can detach it. Can I detach it? I can close it and then reopen it through here. Uh, what do I want? I want top stitch, didn't I? And I can give it its own tab if I pop it down the bottom. And using these little arrows will turn it into a vertical tab. So I could have the property editor open and then just click top stitch and now I've got top stitch and I can close property and all I've got is top stitch and so on and so forth. And of course I could close all of them to you know get more real estate and uh, yeah especially since i don't actually use these very often uh, i can click the little hide thing there and i can get a lot of real estate there we go so uh, i'm sure there are other things i think they're kind of the main ones i don't think there's been any particular um i, I haven't heard of any kind of performance improvements in terms of the 3d view um, the one other thing is a lot more tools have been grouped together. Uh, I don't know if you felt it, but at the top of the um, each window there was quite a lot of real estate. You know, there were lots and lots of icons that I found quite confusing. Uh, but now a lot have been grouped together. So if I come under the render, for example, just point at it, it gives me the options. Uh, move doesn't have anything. I've got the select meshes, etc. So a lot more of them have been grouped. So some things that you probably are just about got used to finding, they might be in a slightly different place now. Um, so yes, there we go. I think that's simplified it, and I'm sure when I get to using it uh, in you know in reality, uh, that's going to make my life a little bit easier. Because yeah, it was getting too busy up there, and I was a little bit frustrated with it. Okay, so uh, I think that's about that for the interface. It's all, uh, all the, certainly in the important bits, I think. Um, so uh, what are we going to do next? Uh, well, we'll have a look at the uh, partial solidify or solidifying selection. 
and uh, see what we can do with that. So I'll talk to you then. Okay, so we can now uh, paint on here using the mesh paintbrush and solidify an area. And the reason you might want to do that is you can kind of arrange a garment and scrunch it up and get it to look a little bit more how you wanted it. And then, you know, you can solidify it. It doesn't freeze it, it makes it's still flexible, but it's much stiffer, so it tries to keep its shape. So what I'm going to do is um, set the simulation going, hopefully. Yeah, and now I'm going to wait for it to figure out what's going on. I've tried to take as much out of this as I can. <laughs> I've disabled half the garment and uh, taken the point size down on the rest of it. Uh, but it still takes ages to crank up, so perhaps I'll speed this bit up. I'm going to speed this bit up. Oh no, there we go. Okay, so now what I want to do is drag my garment a little further up the arm. Just ever so gently. If I go too far, it's going to go a bit crazy. But somewhere I'm getting there. See, it's kind of fighting me a little bit. Come on. There we go. So now it's sort of crunching up and yeah, getting some nice shapes in there. Fine, stop the simulation and go back. You'll see the difference between that and the other arm. So now we can use our mesh paint brush, which is up here. So select mesh brush. And I can paint on here to uh, it's an area. I find it easier to do it over here, frankly. Uh, so I'll do it on the 2D window and then I can right click and solidify. So as I said this solidify doesn't completely freeze it. What it does is uh, makes it much stiffer and it will do you know a lot to try and keep its shape. So if I could just go back to the select brush you can see that it's kind of marked. It's uh, not selected anymore but it's marked the areas that have been uh, solidified. And now I can set the um, set the sim off again. And as I pull this around, you'll see that that area. Uh, see it's springing back now. So it's trying very hard to keep its shape. It's not going to be perfect because it's not completely solid. Um, but you know you can get some nice effects with it. So you've um, you know got like a dress, or and you've got some nice folds in it, or a t-shirt with some nice folds in it. You can solidify some of those folds, and um, it would be much harder for the simulation to to knock them out. So that's a new feature. It's quite useful, and I can click on that area again, and right click and delete the solidify region to get it back to normal if I want to. There we go. So that's uh, the solidify area. Uh, I don't think there's anything else really of note that I've noticed. If I do find anything, I'll add it in. Uh, MD does have a new uh, logo, you might notice. Not the most significant thing in the world, but it's, uh, you know, it's there. Um, and I think there are a couple of new garments, unless I missed them in the last one. A couple more for the stylized Hannah. We've got this like, tennis outfit. And the one I've loaded at the minute is kind of uh, jeans and t-shirt with a jacket. Um, and yeah, there may be some others in there, but uh, yeah, that's about it. So I, I hope that was useful and I'll talk to you in another video soon.